on and the reasons for the delay in the submission of the incident. Systemic lapses between notifying the division and the occurrence of the R can become a certification concern. Another thing to focus on, is there enough details in the description of the incident? Many incidents reports need follow-up by program integrity simply because we do not have all the facts or we do not understand the narrative that has been written. Please let us know the who, the what, the where, the why. Try to avoid using personal pronouns. Try to use the proper names and or the staff's title or description as you are composing the narrative. You should write the narrative as if we do not know the persons involved or the situation that occurred. Try to be descriptive and paint a picture of what has happened. Do not use hyperbole, exaggerations, or draw wild conclusions, but simply try to state the facts that you have observed. What are some things to look for to make a good narrative? First of all, the first narrative should describe the preceding events that happened right before the criteria was met for the incident. For example, Bob said that he was in a hurry to leave Dahab. John, the staff, was assisting another participant into her wheelchair. Bob left the house alone to get into the van. We didn't need to know the name of the second participant as it didn't apply to the, to the report for Bob. Next is the section where you give us a description of the factual event. For example, Bob slipped on the ice in the driveway. Bob fell and broke his wrist while walking to the van at approximately 9 a.m. Staff, Tina, contacted nursing immediately and Bob was taken to the ER at 9.20 a.m. where his wrist was put into a cast. Bob was then released to go home at 11 o'clock a.m. with one week of pain medication, Percocet, and directions for care of the cast. Next, you need to put in the narrative what follow-up action has been or should be taken. For instance, in Bob's case, all staff in this home are being trained on the care of Bob's cast and nursing has added the pain medication to his schedule. Bob did not have appropriate shoes on for the ice. Bob and all of his staff are being trained on appropriate footwear for winter weather. Bob is currently resting comfortably at home. Try to stick to the facts, what you know, and try to explain as best as you're able as if we do not know the situation. Let's go through a couple scenarios and a couple examples and we'll ask, does this meet the division's requirement of, of a notification of incident? If so, which category does it fall under? First, scenario number one. A participant tends to wander at night. In order to prevent this, the night staff decides to place a chair up against the person's door to prevent him from getting out. The staff is usually within earshot of the door, so that if the person tries to get out, the staff can intervene. Is this a reportable incident? Yes, it is. What category does it fall under? Suspected abuse. Scenario number two. A participant was cooking and inadvertently caused a small fire in the kitchen. The fire department, EMS, and the sheriff all responded to the 911 call as was protocol for that community. Is this a reportable incident? Yes. Which category does it fall under? Police involvement. Scenario number three. A participant has a seizure, falls and gets cut on the head. Nursing asks staff to take her to the ER as a precaution. The doctor uses medical adhesive to close the wound. Is this a reportable incident? Yes. Which category? Serious injury. Scenario number four. A participant needs repositioning every two hours as ordered by the doctor and outlined in the schedule. Staff does not reposition the person for several days. This results in skin breakdown that gets infected. Is this a reportable incident? Yes. Which category? Suspected neglect. Scenario number five. A participant is eating dinner, 
makes a choking sound, and then vomits. Staff notice the participant has a slight temperature. So staff decide to play it safe and have the ER look at them. The ER diagnoses the participant as having a stomach virus. Is this a reportable incident? No, because any illness is not a reportable category. And that is an often confused one with the serious injury category. Thank you very much for participating in our training on notification of incident as required by the Developmental Disabilities Division. If you have further questions about the notification of incident, please refer to our rules and regulations. You can find those on the Secretary of State's website listed here. Follow these directions and type in Chapter 45.